Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com. Uh, weekend update show. It's actually not the weekend yet. It is uh, Friday. It's around 20 minutes to uh, five. Usually I'm just relaxing, kind of decompressing, you know, taking all in of the week. But I, I for all you guys who, who are travel parents, uh, this is, you know, the start of a couple of weeks ago, started the AAU basketball season. You guys know what that is. I got uh, three games tomorrow for my daughter. My son has, I think, four games this weekend. So, this is literally the only time I could share my thoughts. So hopefully uh, everybody is uh, doing well. If you are brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much for finding us, for tuning in. Uh, all we ask is take one second. That's all it takes. Uh, take one second. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe, uh, share, and come on board. So I guess you trade long enough, you, you see everything, right? I, I think that's the name of the game. I, I've always said that time um, is the ultimate equalizer. Um, the more screen time you have, uh, the more you can identify situations, uh, scenarios, and learn how to dodge them, right? I think that's the most important part. Uh, learning how to dodge missiles uh, and not stepping on landmines is probably one of the best things you can give yourself. The, one of the greatest gifts you could teach yourself how to be as a trader, all the, all, all the signs. But sometimes the market does such a great job that you don't see the missiles coming. You don't see the, the grenades uh, pointed uh, right at your feet. You don't see them. And that's exactly what happened today. Uh, not today, but that's exactly what happened this week uh, in the market. Number one, the indexes are really not going to paint the story. Uh, you have uh, the S&P down 1.6%. Again, not small, not big, but again, good enough. Uh, the NASDAQ 100 uh, down half of a percent. Again, doesn't scream anything, doesn't jump off the page. The Dow Jones down about 2.5% is kind of a big deal. We'll kind of uh, get to the severity of certain indexes here uh, in a second. But it's, it was the wildness, okay? It was the aggressive nature. It was the data. Some data was the same. Some data was uh, interpreted different. I, I think a lot of uh, traders, especially in the last 24 hours, got caught off guard. And let me explain. So Wednesday, we had uh, the core CPI number. We came in, I think, a tenth of a percent uh, hotter, you know, hotter than normal. And the market tanked, right? The Dow was down like four or 500 points. The NASDAQ was down, you know, almost 200, 200 and change. And the next day, with literally the same data, the market was awaiting for the PPI, right? And we got the PPI number, which basically the inflation reading, let's be honest, did not change in the 24 hours. So the results of what happened next um, was not, you know, was not something I think a lot of traders uh, saw coming. So we had this really aggressive rally yesterday. Okay, really aggressive. Okay, the PPI number uh, was 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 uh, was wrong. The CPI number was wrong, but the price action was the most important part. And yesterday we had this just an amazing rally. Remember the numbers, guys? We were talking about uh, throughout the whole week. We talked about two numbers, right? We talked about, if you've been watching the video throughout the week, you talked, we talked about 443.20s to the upside and 435 to the downside. Well, yesterday we confirmed 433 to the upside and the market just absolutely exploded, just, just went absolutely nuts uh, in the afternoon and the queues went from 443 uh, all the way to 446. And this was the highest close literally in the last two weeks. And we were on the cusp, literally on the cusp of attacking the reversal candle from April the 4th. Remember that crazy, crazy day on April the 4th, the NASDAQ reversed like 15 points off the highs? We were very, very close. And you saw some phenomenal looking setups coming into today's session. NVIDIA looked ridiculous. 
absolutely ridiculous. Um, Microsoft looked like it was about to take out highs. Meta looked like it was about to take out highs. Uh, it just looked so good. I, I, I can't tell you how many of my buddies uh, were long technology overnight. I was long. Um, I was long the video overnight. Right. Everything looked great. The video's chart looked amazing. I mean, just absolutely amazing, right? Absolutely amazing. Uh, it, it got above three supply zones, took out everything, literally took out everything. All it needed to do was get above this 908 level on the 10 day, and we would have been having this conversation in 922. And at the same time, yesterday, they were coming for the May 17, $1,000 calls, one after another, after another, after another, five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars bets. So we were all set up. Everything was great. And then you wake up this morning, you see news of tension. Iran is going to, allegedly, I mean, who the hell knows, right? Is 48 hours away for a possible strike on Israel's uh, government, you know, government agencies. Uh, you have the China crisis. You have China, again, coming out with, uh, coming out with PRs that, again, we're going in-house on our chips. AMD is going to be affected. Intel is going to be affected. Pretty much the same news. That, and then next thing you know, uh, everything that basically happened yesterday and the QQQ that had this phenomenal, I mean, absolutely phenomenal explosion out of this range, gave it all back. Just gave it literally all back. And if you look at the, the final data points, say, you know, pretty ugly scene here. You know, you have, let's see, the final numbers here. You got the, the Dow down... 475 points. You got the S&P down uh, 1.5%. And then you have the NASDAQ down 267 points or 1.62. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. The only, the only thing that saved me was I was we were up about, going into the overnight, it was up about six points uh, into the overnight on NVIDIA. Uh, and I shorted Q's as a hedge. I, I, again, I'm just it's just one of those things that I just don't trust anything. I came this close of not taking a hedge. And thank goodness, we got down this morning, you know, uh, the video was down like eight, nine, rallied back a little bit. Uh, the Qs went down like four and a half. So if it wasn't for Qs, I would have had a, a really, really crappy day. But the point is, I think a lot of traders got caught off guard both days. Both days, not even uh, just today's sell-off, but yesterday's uh, rally. And I, I tell you, you know, this is, you know, you trade long enough, you're going to eventually be humble, like humble very, very aggressively. So for, you know, a, a little message from new traders, you're never as good as the, the market, okay? You, you're never as good as you think, and you're never as bad as you think. The market will give you uh, every reason to think that you could walk on water, sip on your own Kool-Aid, and then one day you're feeling yourself, everything's all good, and they really, really do, uh, they really pull up, they really pull a ditty on you. No ditty, right? And the most important part, kind of a takeaway going into t going into this week, is what happens next. Obviously, um, the news, Iran, Israel over the weekend, uh, it's going to be a very fluid situation. Uh, right now, it's what almost a quarter to five on Friday. By the time you guys watch this video, whether it's today, Saturday, or Sunday, there's going to be a million different headlines. We don't know. You know, is it possible there's some sort of truce? Knock on wood. Is it possible there's a, a, an all-out attack? It's possible. The United States is always involved. Everybody's involved. So again, it's a domino effect. It's not just you know what happens there or stays there. It's 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 a very big uh, domino effect, and obviously it's going to affect uh, the equities markets on Monday. But if you look at the scoreboard, right? If you look at the scoreboard on the indexes, this is where you have to kind of open up your eyes. Uh, and, and and smell reality. Let's start off with uh, the Dow Jones, right? Let's use the diamonds uh, as a proxy. So the Dow lost the reversal bar on April the 4th, four days ago, which also confirmed the 50-day moving average. Keep that in mind, right? Keep that in mind. Put this aside for a second, losing the 50-day moving average. And what happened next, it lost the 50-day moving average and it went to the next measure potential which was right here, which is the 100-day EMA, right? So lost the 50, went down to the 100-day EMA. That is the line in the sand now, the lowest today, the line in the sand for the Dow. Dow starts losing the 100-day, there's another seven to eight points. That means another seven to 800 Dow points uh, potentially could get hit. Look at the, the SPX, right? We'll use the SPIs, you know, we'll use the SPI as a parameter. Again, let's remember that 50-day moving average, right? The S&P also gave back that CPI bar, that reversal bar. It closed below, but the S&P or the SPIs, they held the 50-day moving average today. Remember the Dow 
closed below and had a nice four or five day swan dive. Well, the SPY held the 50 day moving average today. Let me tell you guys in nuts and bolts numbers. Here's the line in the sand for the bulls, right? You see this 5107 level, okay? The bulls need to hold 5107, okay? If we don't hold 5107 and this whole 5100 area closes, then you have, a, you know, you have your next measure potential all the way down to 5052, okay? Look at the IWM. Russell today, um, just like the Dow, lost the 50-day moving average three days ago. And just what we talk about all the time, when you lose the 50-day moving average, nothing good's going to happen. It's a sell signal. Don't think anything other than that. It's a sell signal. And you see the IWM in the last couple of days lose the, you know, lose the 50-day, go from 203 all the way down to 197. And last but not least is the NASDAQ 100 or the QQQs. This is the only one of the indexes that has not lost that reversal bar yet. Coincidentally, the reversal bar is also the 50-day moving average. Guys, I can't echo the sentiment how important it is for the Qs to hold 435 next week, right? Because we got above the 435, 443, ran up about three, four points, reverse today, right? Back in the range. I can't implore how important it is, especially if you are a long-term investor, a swing trader, excuse me, Once we lose, and again, this is an if, but we, we want to make sure everybody's prepared. If the QQQ starts losing 435, especially on the close, it starts filling in this whole gap. The first move is not that crazy. It's only to about 430, 431. What gets crazy is if it starts losing that 430, 431, then you have another 10 points of downside into the 100-day EMA. Again, I don't want to put the cart in front of the horse, but I want to make sure that if you're watching this broadcast, it's not just one of those things, ah, yeah, the 50-day moving average, all those useless lines on your charts, right? All that nonsense. Don't worry. I'm a swing trader. I'll be all right. Well, that's fair. And again, it's your dime, your dance floor. But keep this in mind. When we lost the 50-day moving average in 2022, the NASDAQ went down 34%. Nobody's saying that's going to happen, but at least be aware of history. Remember the old saying, those people who uh, refuse to acknowledge history, they're going to be the ones who are going to repeat it. Again, this is your opportunity to get your ducks in a row. Uh, make sure that either either hedge your long positions with either cues, whatever the case may be, spies, or do something proactive. Don't just sit there and if in case we do lose the 50-day moving average, hoping it's going to come back. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. It took a whole calendar year from 2022 to 2023 uh, to come back up. And at that time, the cues lost about 34% uh, of the value. So going into this week, guys, do or die. This is it. Do or die here. Uh, 435 on the QQQs. If we lose the 435 area, not good. Okay, not good. Uh, I trade both sides of the market. Uh, matter of fact, if you are interested in learning pivots, and that's all we do, we trade pivots, whether it's daily, intraday, we talk about the sneaky pivots all the time. Uh, if you are interested in pivots, guys, again, click the link uh, in the comments. 30 days, kick the tires, uh, try out the PS60 theory. You're going to like it. You're going to, especially if you trade intraday. Uh, you are going to like it because it's a norm. It's an abnormal way, right? It's an abnormal way of looking at the market that most people are not aware of. Trading between channels, so you're not trading from a position of weakness. You're always trading a position of strength. But going into this week, uh, four thirty-five line in the sand. There's no room for interpretation here. That is uh, the big number. And if we close below four thirty-five, just rip out your buy button uh, until we reclaim it uh, back. Uh, again, all over the place. Uh, Nvidia looked great yesterday. Great. What a, I mean, the initial pivot uh, was above uh, 867. Excuse me, uh, 877 went all the way up. You know, all the way up to 907. Uh, and you know, again, technically today it put in an inside day. So in case we rally tomorrow uh, on Monday, let's watch the top of the range here. But again, if it starts losing back the five-day moving average, just like everything else. I don't care how strong the stock that you're in or you're watching or you're looking to buy, no, nothing's going to hold up if, if we lose uh, the 50-day moving average. But but again, on the surface, right? On the surface, again, because we can't assume we're going to lose the 50-day. On the surface, at least NVIDIA had an inside day uh, that potentially if the market does rally back on Monday, Tuesday, this thing could uh, actually still wake up. Ironically, the strongest name that held up was the biggest dog for the last calendar year, was Apple. And this is a learning lesson 
to all the companies out there. Just use the word AI. You'll be good. Apple did so, and look at the run. Look at the run it had uh, in the last couple of days. Again, still underneath supply, still got rejected uh, at the 50-day moving average. So it still needs a little bit of work uh, to do to get uh, to get uh, going. But again, this is something uh, that at least is encouraging if you are an Apple shareholder. Rivian, you guys remember Rivian? Rivian finally cracked. Finally, finally cracked. Uh, we shorted this thing uh, yesterday at ten dollars. I'm still running about twenty percent of my uh, runner. It closed a little bit less, a little bit above nine. I would love to see this thing close uh, in the eights sometime next week. And it really does show you the longer the distribution. We've been talking about this name for a while. The longer the distribution, the finally the higher probability will crack. It finally did crack. We did we did see some uh, June, July eight and seven and a half puts. Hopefully. Uh, they will get uh, paid off. Uh, Tesla continues to be uh, very, very tight in the range. Uh, it's just not going anywhere fast. Again, every single time you think it's going to wake up, it gets rejected. Every single time it looks like it's about to break down, it comes back up. It has a lot of lives. But it, the most important part, I want to watch this intermediate channel here to the downside going into this next week. And obviously, last week's highs is a potential barometer. Uh, Microsoft that looked great, great, great. Now it's just holding on. It's holding on to this bottom channel here. Again, you start need, you need to start getting ideas if the if the keys start losing the 50 day. I definitely want to watch the bottom channel here uh, as well on Microsoft. And uh, let me give you guys let me see what else looks interesting that I can share with you guys. Um, Reddit. Look at Reddit, guys. Look at Reddit. Uh, Reddit is now. Uh, several days. Remember we talked about below the IPO lows. It's now several days below it. Uh, watch this week's lows. If they start breaking down this week's lows and the market gets pulled, you can see the measure potential here all the way down the linear regression line, all the way down to this 40, maybe 35 level if the market gets uh, extreme. And the last one was AMD. Uh, AMD broke, you guys remember, broke that reversal bar, uh, traded all the way down to the 100-day EMA Guys, watch this uh, AMD again in case the market breaks next week. This thing starts losing the 100 day. There's a lot of room down. So we are ready. Uh, we are not sitting there hoping the market does one thing uh, or the other. We are ready for both sides. And, and again, there's a big difference. When you start your trading career, you have to ask yourself, you have to sit down and ask yourself a, a, a really honest question. Do I want to be a person who buys stocks in a bull market, which you have every right to do? Or do I, do I want to be a trader? Only you can answer that question. Nobody can uh, fill uh, that void in your career uh, but you. But if you, you, if you do opt for, um, you know, opt for door number two, there's a lot of work involved. There's a lot of understanding of moving parts, supply and demand. But once you have enough screen time and it all makes sense, it makes your transition to the both sides of the market that much more seamless. So guys, have a great weekend, everybody. God bless you all. Stay healthy. Hopefully there'll be no uh, significant bad news over the weekend coming out of the Middle East. And with God's help, I'll see you all on Monday. Take care, everybody. Have a great night.